Regular viewers may be wondering, Gavia, why are we doing a whole costume design video about a show where everyone wears flannel shirts, hoodies, jeans, and tough outdoor jackets? Do you need me to explain it to you? Well, folks, it's all about that post-apocalyptic realism and why the concept of realism is often more of a fantasy. Okay. My very first video on this channel was all about Mad Max Fury Road, a brilliant post-apocalyptic movie with a very bold aesthetic. The original Mad Max kickstarted a trend for dystopian settings with wild, punk-influenced costumes, contrasting with more serious films like Children of Men, which try to create an air of grimy authenticity. The Last of Us TV adaptation definitely falls into that second category, unsurprisingly given that Children of Men was an obvious influence on the original video game. Set 20 years after a zombie pandemic wiped out most of humankind, The Last of Us is a survival thriller about people carving out a life after the collapse of civilization. The plot is fueled by pragmatic concerns about how to survive in small communities with scarce resources. Its main characters invariably dress in practical, nondescript clothes left over from before the apocalypse in 2003. But in this context, what does realistic costume design actually mean? We should get moving. Hi, I'm Gavia Baker-Whitelaw and this is Behind the Seams, exploring the world of costume design. To understand the thought process behind any show or movie's costume choices, we need to consider two separate angles. The in-universe explanation for why characters dress the way they do, and the real-world goals and desires of the creative team. In The Last of Us, virtually everyone wears commercial, mass-produced clothing like jeans, hoodies and jackets. We can assume that these outfits were either looted from stores or abandoned homes, or traded with other survivors. Factory-based clothing production stopped when civilization collapsed in 2003, so everyone is stuck wearing old garments. The protagonist, Joel, has been wearing the same boots for 20 years, and Ellie's t-shirts and hoodies are rooted in early 2000s style. On the one hand, there are very few survivors compared to the original population, meaning less demand for the remaining clothes. On the other hand, these leftovers are a finite resource, and mass-produced basics like underwear, socks and t-shirts don't last very long. The characters in some locations don't have access to decent laundry facilities or new sources of clothing, so it makes sense for their wardrobe to be stained and worn. However, the population of the Wyoming commune are comfortably well-dressed, one of many signs that their town is thriving. And the couple in episode 3, Frank and Bill, seem to have a relatively varied wardrobe because they have an entire neighbourhood to themselves. Even so, within another generation, most of those 2003-era items will be worn out. Eventually, people will have to start making clothing from scratch. This is a complex and time-consuming process that involves harvesting fibres from animals like sheep or plants like cotton, then spinning those fibres into thread or yarn, and then weaving or knitting it into fabric. Once they've run out of old second-hand clothes, the surviving humans will have to relearn these skills from scratch, possibly without the machines that made mass production easy in 2003. But for now, the costumes are restricted to familiar items that make the characters look normal and relatable to modern eyes. That being said, a lot of work still goes into this kind of costuming. In the show's wardrobe department, all these items had to be artificially distressed and stained to look like they'd been worn for years. Some buttons were torn off and replaced by string ties, a subtle reminder that survivors probably wouldn't have spare buttons on hand. And for specific locations like the prologue scenes in Texas and Indonesia, the costumers had to source clothing that fit the trends of that time and place. Meanwhile, in the real world, the creative concerns behind these fashion choices are deceptively complex. Inspired by the aesthetic of The Last of Us video games, the creative team wanted this show to look grimy and quote-unquote realistic. But as I pointed out earlier, what does realistic really mean? In a show or movie with a conventionally gritty tone, this usually translates to a subdued colour palette and tough practical clothing with no quirky fashion choices. The showrunners of The Last of Us intentionally avoided an overly grey or brown aesthetic, but otherwise the show follows a very familiar, conservative style for the genre. Hardly anyone wears skirts or displays a notably individual sense of style, and we see a lot of durable outdoor shirts and khaki. And although most viewers interpret this as a realistic style, 
It's a world-building choice like any other. While everyone likes to stay warm and dry, and it makes sense for long-lasting outerwear to be in high demand in this kind of setting, I still think we'd see a lot more variation in people's fashion choices. After all, the show does depict people forming distinct communities and political factions. I think we'd expect new fashion trends to emerge, especially among young people, even when they don't have many resources to work with. It's human nature for people to want to express themselves and look attractive, for instance by experimenting with haircuts and natural dyes, or modifying the available clothes. The TV show Station Eleven did a very effective job of this. In many ways a grounded and serious post-apocalyptic drama, it offers a more uplifting outlook than many stories of this type. Focusing on a theatre troupe who travel between settlements of survivors, the main characters struggle with grief, trauma and the difficulties of building a new way of life. But they also have hobbies and personal pursuits, with a particular emphasis on the importance of art and self-expression. I think this is very true to life. Meanwhile, in The Last of Us, most characters tend to wear pretty generic, practical clothing, with little sign of vanity or individual taste. During the Wyoming episode, there's an obvious cowboy vibe to some of the costumes signalling the show's Wild West influences. And in the heavily militarised Kansas City, we see a more dystopian vision of people wearing recycled police armour and dirty, less cared for clothes, suggesting that they spend more time fighting than taking care of everyday needs, like laundry. But in general, the show's costumes are guided entirely by practical concerns. And whether this jeans and outdoor jackets aesthetic is truly realistic is really a matter of opinion. Oh, is that everything you hoped for? At the same time, these fashion choices are also influenced by how the show wants to position its main characters and what the actors themselves prefer to wear. For instance, actor Bella Ramsey is non-binary and has spoken about wearing a chest binder while filming the show, which had a minor impact on Ellie's appearance. And while Joel is characterised as a rough, tough, middle-aged survivor who probably doesn't care about his own appearance, the show is still presenting Pedro Pascal as an attractive leading man as evidenced by his well-fitted costumes. His jeans are flattering and his shirts are tailored to accentuate his broad shoulders and narrower hips. These choices were presumably made to make Pedro Pascal look good, even though it's rather implausible for Joel to find so many clothes that fit this well. The same goes for the bras worn by many female characters, because it's hard enough to find bras that fit now, never mind 20 years after everyone's looted all the accessible department stores. As for Joel's brown trucker jacket, a Flint and Tucker number retailing at $298, it warranted an entire GQ article praising its understated style. Basically, Joel's appearance is guided by masculine fantasies of what men would like to look like in a post-apocalyptic setting, combining rugged handsomeness with practicality. These comments about implausible costume choices aren't intended as a criticism, in the same way that it's kind of silly to complain about the likelihood of gasoline being usable after 20 years of stagnation. Maybe these things wouldn't work this way in real life, but this is fiction. As long as the story makes sense on an emotional and structural level, we can suspend disbelief for minor logistical issues like, say, where these post-apocalyptic survivors are growing all their carbohydrates. And when it comes to the question of realistic visual design, suspension of disbelief is the number one factor. The Last of Us's creators want the audience to engage with the show on a pragmatic, real-world level, rather than viewing it as a fantasy or horror story. They're aiming for what viewers will interpret as a realistic and serious tone. And in that regard, they're very successful. Is it everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. Thanks so much for watching Behind the Scenes. If you're new to this channel and you love costume design as much as I do, consider subscribing and liking this video so you don't miss out on future episodes. And if you couldn't tell, I love covering post-apocalyptic shows and movies, so if you have a favourite, please let me know in the comments below. I read all of them. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.